Hi guys, um, I'm just looking to share with you something that, that happened to me in 2017, May, I think it was a Thursday night. I can remember it so well, um, it was my hell experience that I went through, a dimension of hell. And basically, I thought it was okay. I was one of these Christians who were lukewarm, but again it says in the Bible that God will spew lukewarm Christians out of his mouth and I thought it was okay to live in ways that weren't to dabble in this and that but one thing I've learned from then is we're all in for Christ or we're all out and my incentive for this video is to that God will convict you and reach you for his kingdom and for his glory and that people will come to know Jesus and to live in him and for him. And guys, this is what happened to me. Um, so this this night in May, I was on holiday with my friend, who's a lot older than I am. And I was living in sin. Thought it was okay to do things that weren't. And, and basically, I can remember so well going up to the hotel room, flapping down on my bed. And all of a sudden, I was put into this dimension. And I've been praying about this, that I could articul articulately even explain this to you. And prayerfully asking God to give me the words to, to share it with you. So bear with me, because this is very articulately hard to explain. But I went up to my hotel room. I lay down in my bed. And the only way I can explain this is... I was put into another out-of-body experience, another dimension, which was not Earth. Now I could, and I woke up, and I, and, I, and I said, where am I, Tony? Where am I? And he said, what are you talking about? In this dimension, I could physically touch my friend, but I could not feel him. And in this dimension of hell, if you can imagine the last five minutes of your life on earth and that last five minutes was just going round and round and round and I was doing the exact same things over and over again not wanting to do them such as going up going to the toilet splashing water on my face taking a drink from the top lying back down in the bed feeling content for a second but knowing I was in hell and out of body dimension and out of body experience the worst about this place was there was no presence of god it was a dark hole and i was calling out to god saying please lord get me out of this please but he was not there or nowhere to be found and the worst was yet to come guys there was no presence of god I was begging for another chance and there was nothing. I had a few visions. In this time, there was no recollection of my time. I couldn't tell you what time it was. This place, there was no time. There was no such thing as time. And I had a few visions. One was, I seen my own funeral. My mum stood over my coffin and my nan. And they said, butter wouldn't melt on Jamie's nose. and. I seen there people were there, many people who were crying. And another vision was my beautiful girlfriend was married off with another businessman and had two beautiful children while whilst I was in hell in this place, not knowing how long I was there for. Um another thing was it was twenty ninety eight. I don't know why I thought that. Um as well as that. I looked at my friend and I jumped up and I said, what side of my bed am I on? And he said, you're on the left side, Jimmy. And I, and I, and I cried and burst into tears and said, the man on Jesus' left chose life. The man on Jesus' right chose death. Which one are you going to choose, Jimmy? Guys, this went on and the worst of it was I was begging God. For a second chance. And for some reason kept on repeating these words. 
How I hated discipline. How I spurned correction. That's Proverbs. And kept on with, with sobs, crying sobs, sobbing and kicking. I was down on my hands and knees, kicking my feet, begging God for a second chance. Saying these words, if the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. But the worst of it was, God, guys, there was no presence of God there. It was hopelessness. And, the, and, and I was doing the exact same things over and over and over again every five minutes. Or what seems to be like five minutes, I don't know. My friend was crying on his hands and knees. And I can honestly say, guys, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here on this earth. I would have just tried to jump out the window or something to get out of this place. I can't really articulately ex explain to you guys how scurry and fearful this place was. But I know one thing for sure. It was real. And hell is real. And this was one dimension that I experienced. Another vision that I had was my friend's hand came down from heaven and grabbed my hand from hell, my arm, hand in hand. And he wouldn't let me go. But I knew at some point he was going to have to let go. And that's when the worst would happen. I would be eternally tormented of some sort. And guys, you might think, I don't really care what you think about me. Or if you think that I'm crazy. I don't care if you believe me or not. I care about this. That the one person, the one soul that comes to know Christ through this video. And I tell you that everything that I'm saying was the truth. This is what I experienced. And it was a nasty place. And you would not wish your own worst enemy to go there. All I care about, guys, is souls for Christ. And repent, therefore, and turn from your ways to God's ways, and you'll be forgiven. Acts 3.19 You need to repent from your sin, therefore, that they'll be blotted out. Guys, know what I'm saying is truth. And I can't even articulately say or, or what this place was, or how to even say it, but it was terrible. The worst of it was, there was no presence of God there at all. I was crying, I was begging for a second chance. And guys, there's many people in the same position right now who are begging for a second chance and who can't get out. And they wish that they had that conviction and that challenge that you have now to make a decision to come to know Jesus Christ, to repent from your sin, to turn from your sin and to turn to God. They wish that they had that opportunity again. Guys, don't leave this too late. And it's only by the grace of God that I'm saved. His grace plucked me out of this. There's a verse in the, in the Psalms was, Thank you, Father God, that you, you, you took me out of the slimy pit. And God did that. He took me out of the slimy pit. And he gave me another set, a chance. A chance. And, and I honestly have to say, since then... I have been given this testimony and going out and evangelizing and sharing the gospel the best way that I know how. That Jesus Christ can save you only if you repent and turn from your ways to his ways. And I feel like a completely changed man from then to now. But I believe 110% guys that God had to put me there and allow me to taste a glimpse of hell. For me to be where I am now. To tell you guys out in the street about Jesus. And here's the thing. Guys, please come to know Jesus. What I'm saying is true. It's not a lie. Why would I want to make something up like this? I had visions whilst I was in this place. But the worst of it was I, I had the knowledge. I had the knowledge where I was. I had the knowledge I was in hell. And there was no presence of God there. I was, and the feeling, the fear, the trembling and the fear that I experienced there was hard. And that's to say the least. There's no words can describe what I experienced. And I just went over and over and over and over again. And I was doing the same things over and over again. 
getting up, going to the toilet, splashing my face, taking a drink of water, land on my bed again, and that would go over again, and begging and kicking and stomping my feet and crying out how I hated discipline, how I spurned correction. If the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed, screaming these things and sobbing while saying them, because I knew it was too late. And thank you, Jesus, for, for, for giving me another chance. And it's by the cross of Jesus Christ and in that, the, uh, your salvations, guys, it's, it can't be earned. It is a gift from God. It says in God's word, it says in his word, the wages, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is everlasting life. It's a gift. We can't earn our salvation. And I encourage you lukewarm Christians or what, yeah, lukewarm Christians to to think about what you're doing, to repent and turn from your ways to God's. We can't live in sin. We cannot live in habitual sin or sit on the fence. Hell is real. And what are you doing about it? Who are you sharing the gospel with? And guys, please hear me. Share, share this with people and, and share the gospel with people. Go. So I just want to leave that with you guys. Um, and that's the reason why I'm doing this video. Is to help you understand. Or to, to reach somebody for Christ. Because I don't want anyone going to that place. And there's a knowledge of. That you're there. And there's nothing you can do about it. And there's no presence of God there. It's a dark pit. Um, and that's my experience guys. So I pray Father. That, that you will convict people, Lord, and that they will ask you into their lives and repent from their sin, turn from their ways to your ways. And that they will not take this message lightly and they will not take your gospel, more importantly, for lightly or for granted. So guys, bless this to you. Thank you for listening.